Well, welcome everyone. We're back again with a interview with uh, somebody from the Jesus Movement days. And uh, uh, our guest today especially um, is, uh, is unique in that in the beginning, uh, he, was, he was not part of the Jesus Movement, um, but actually came somewhere along the line there, came to the Lord through this whole experience. And uh, so he, he's got a great perspective on probably both sides of the fence. What, what, did, what did it look like um, uh, to people who weren't Christians? Were they even aware that there was going something going on? in those days and uh so this will be really a fun uh a fun interview and a great half hour with our good friend noel paul stuckey mm -hmm. noel welcome thank you john nice to be here <laughs> interesting to, interesting to think about the jesus movement as a movement you know mm -hmm. since it's uh it's a powerful effect is so personalized and that those persons now are out in the real world uh, in various positions of power, influence, mm -hmm. and I doubt very many of them are as old as I am, maybe Barry McGuire, but, uh, or you, uh, but the, uh, you're saying, give us this, give us a start date from your well, point of view what do you well, think my po my point of view is that the jesus movement uh, itself began somewhere around 19 end of 1969 that's where i kind of placed the beginning and i i i placed the end of it at 1972 but i'm probably the only guy who will do that but i <laughs> i i place the end of the jesus movement as being explo 72 in dallas where 100,000 people got together and to celebrate um, Jesus, and that took a lot of planning and organization, and and all the stuff, all the stuff that none of the rest of the Jesus movement had. No planning, no organization, no nothing, just yeah. people flying by the seat of their pants. You know, to me, that was Holy Spirit led. You know, yeah. And, and then by 1972, you know, we got a hold of it, and we started to do it ourselves, and then we got into the christian music scene and all of that took over and yeah you know the rest i do well in you know, in 1968 69 flushed with my own success uh <laughs> i i was uh out of orbit um i had uh and i had a lovely daughter i had a lovely wife but i was on the road for 300 concerts a year mm. uh and uh you're really estranged from my that child that dwells in each of us mm. um, and really open uh you know to finding out what the truth with a capital t was <laughs> so when uh, steve hans came backstage and i and i think it might have been uh no it wasn't awesome it was abilene texas I didn't know his name then, but he said he was just this guy who wandered backstage at the Coliseum, and you know security's pretty tight at concerts, so just that this random guy should be there while Peter's on stage doing his solo section and says, "I want to talk to you. Uh, I'd like to talk to you about something." And uh, and I said, "Well, you know, now's not really a good time. I'm tuning up the guitar. I got to go on in about two or three minutes." I said, "But I'll look for you. You know, after the show. Come on back after the show." not really thinking about how amazing it was that he was there in an isolated circumstance, uh, how he possibly could have gotten back with no security pass or whatever. Um, so after the show, I'm looking around. I don't see him. I'm signing autographs. People are telling me the last time they saw Peter, Paul, and Mary, because they were eight or nine years into a career now mm -hmm. that has gone around the world a couple of times, had uh, a lot of a lot of people repeat uh, audiences coming back who were moved. They're not bringing their children yet because it's only been eight or nine years. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> but then I spot him and I said, what was it you wanted to talk to me about? And he said, I want to talk to you about the Lord. And my, my heart did the equivocal, you know, beat, 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 beat. Because prior to that, 
you know, I had been casting around, even asking, you know, prayerfully, you know, where where is the truth of the matter? I want to be I want to be on the good guy team. Where is the good? Where are the good guys? Because in in the political world, there are lots of compromises made, and some people with the best intentions have to take strange turns to their life in order to accomplish what they think would be the best for the world. And uh, you know, it's like people in the peace movement who would, uh, you know, give you the finger if you turned in, left in front of them from a right-hand lane. You know, uh, <laughs> I, I I was really of I was really looking for a constancy, you know, between people's behavior and what they profess to believe. And I wasn't finding it or seeing it. So uh, I said, okay, to the guy, I said, just let me finish up here a little bit. We got on the back of a pickup truck, went to my motel room and, huh. and I'm, I'm acting like the, uh, the beneficial host, you know, can I get, can I get you a soda? Uh, do you know you? And I think, in a sense, trying to delay the confrontation uh, if this guy was really serious. Matter of fact, in the back of the pickup truck driving over the motel that night, I remember turning to him and trying to substantiate my own spiritual bearing by saying, so uh, what do you think about reincarnation? I wanted to show I was kind of hip and into it, (laughs) into into life spiritual. And he said... (laughs) This is, he said, well, it may or may not be true, but there seems like we got more important things to talk about, don't you? Huh. <laughs> I thought, wow, I don't know, all right. And then, uh, so the moment the door closed in the motel, and he was with two friends. Uh, I guess you could call them apostles. But he said, I think we should pray. And John, honestly, and I think, most people who are listening or watching this today would recognize the fact that there comes a moment of facing ourselves that occurs in every life. And uh, I just, I just begin to cry because I realized how estranged I was Hmm. from even, even the primitive sense of God that I knew when I was a kid, you know, uh, you know, the God that granted has to go, has to go by the identification uh, symbols of get me out of this and I'll never do it again kind of God, you know, <laughs> as a young kid. Uh, but then I just began to weep. weep. Uh, and mostly I just said, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I don't remember saying much more than that. Uh, Steve Hansen and his friends laid hands on me, prayed. Uh, but I really was not aware of Jesus at the center of it. Uh, that came later as I began to grow into the faith because I knew that I was irrevocably changed. Uh, you know, when I, when I left the hotel room the following morning, you know, I looked at this, uh, the Bible that had been placed at, you know, every, in every motel room. And I thought, you know, am I going to remember this or is this just another one of those things that happened on the road? And over a period of the next, I would say, and Steve was good. He followed up, visited me in New York when I lived there uh, and told the story about how he was sitting with his wife. He said, I got to go talk to that guy huh. and just wandered off backstage. Huh. Uh, he was the first awareness of a Jesus freak that I knew of the part of the late sixties and early seventies that I think you've identified already uh, was the love movement Mm -hmm. because nobody had a sense of the particular, I mean, there were, yes, there were Buddhists and, and, and yes, there were Christians and yes, there were, were Jewish uh, participants in this, great spiritual happening that uh, caused, and and it was somewhat related to drugs in terms of it being an opening of your mind or possibilities that would enhance your, uh, say, accessibility. Um, And to, to that extent, the Jesus movement to me uh, 
was mostly exemplified by people that I began to meet, uh, musicians mostly. Um, some were more powerful to me than others. Amy Grant, for instance, was uh, became a reality of a, a performer who was really walking the walk. Uh, I later on in my musical career, uh, I did a concert. I was on the bill with Amy Grant, and right in the middle of one of her songs, somebody was having trouble in the audience. She quit the song. So let's all have a moment of prayer. You know, I mean, to me, that was that was a reality that I pray, you know, that I would like to be a part of. I mean, to have that command of your uh, your your awareness of the divine in the present sense. Um, so right after I, and I became a, pro, a proselytizer. I mean, I, I was obnoxious uh, both to my family and, and on stage, but all I was doing was just trying to explain this amazing thing that had happened to me. Um, and I couched it in terms that I understood at the time, which were, you know, if you look back on them, I think anybody's first experience in religion is going to rely pretty much on the labels of the church or the labels of the belief system that they were indoctrinated. So mm -hmm. um, I, I probably offended a lot of people at Forest Hill Stadium in New York, uh, speaking to a predominantly Jewish crowd about Jesus. Uh, Mary was having trouble with me, uh, but that's <laughs> true. But to, but through it all, I think Peter saw uh, my partner, Peter, saw that there was a reality change, a shift that had taken in my in my makeup. And though we had collaborated on earlier tunes, like I wrote early in the morning uh, as a group was just getting together. And honestly, I have to confess, I was just borrowing from liturgy that I was aware of when I was a kid. I'm just borrowing all the names and the labels. Same thing pretty much on very last day, although Peter right. felt that uh, early in the morning was, you know, uh, a good play, uh, got, had received such uh, a great response that we should try to duplicate it with a song called Early in the uh, Very Last Day. So that's what we did. We basically, Peter and I wrote Very Last Day as, a, as an exercise in, in cliches, you know, uh, <laughs> the, but at, at the core of Peter, Paul, and Mary, whether we admitted it uh, or not, was the inheritance of all of the gospel music that we did yeah. uh, that came from many years and hmm. from uh, many, many wonderful, uh, yeah. you know, many wonderful performers. Uh, and so by the time Peter discovered that I had gone through this uh, change, he was getting married and he said, he asked me if I would uh, bless his wedding with a song. And as I've said on stage before, I felt, you know, me bless. Well, you know, I felt a little like uh, the Woody Allen in the film where he says, hands the bank teller a note and says, I don't have a gun, but I know where I can find one. I, I, uh, I knew that I wasn't authorized to dispense blessings, but I knew where I could find one. So mm -hmm. I prayed for the lyrics for, uh, uh, the wedding song, and they came abundantly, uh, pretty much with the tune fashioned in behind them. And I had never, I mean, I've, you know, I've encountered the muse uh, before and subsequent, but not as direct answer to the prayer, which was, how would you manifest yourself at Peter's wedding? So there's a great deal of power in the answer there. I am now to be among you at the calling of your hearts. Rest assured this troubadour is acting on my part. So from that point on, I began to uh, revere, respect, and depend upon that small voice within uh, that I had suddenly become uh, an owner of uh, and made every decision that I could in from 1970 through 19 I don't know, 
70s, and I, well, still to this day, uh, you know, in, in answer to a prayer, most every decision that I make, I go prayerfully. However, the, the focus of the prayer is what is curious to me. And if you don't mind, I'll tell you a story. I was uh, brought over with the, uh, I was brought over to England. And I think it might have been for a C.S. Lewis event uh, sometime in the uh, in the late 70s, when my faith was still pretty new, uh, but I had written a couple of uh, of songs, and, and but I was still combining them with Peter Paul and Mary material to do concerts, and I I finished this one concert and. Uh, and as I was packing up the guitars on stage, I noticed this couple that was standing in front. And uh, I made some small talk, you know, but, but they were reticent to come forward. Most of the audience had filed out. And uh, I said, hi. And he said, hi. I said, was that you singing over there? And we kind of making a joke because there must have been 1,200, 1,300 people at the concert. And I had done, as I said, a variety of the songs. And... Uh, and they played along with it. They said, yeah. And then and then there was this awkward moment. And finally they said, we think we have a word of the Lord for you. Well, that same kind of boom, boom, boom happened, you know, that uh, <laughs> happened when I was, uh, when I turned my life over. Uh, and I said, oh, they said, yeah. Uh, and they looked at each other kind of nervously and they said, don't use my name. And I went, oh, and they looked at each other and me again, and they said, we don't know what it means. We just know we're supposed to tell you that. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Mm. And at that point, so I'm, I have two choices, right? It means, <laughs> it means stop talking about the divine uh, altogether, or did it mean, and this was the path that I chose and which I'm still on now, mm -hmm. don't talk uh, about God so much as show how God has changed your life. And, and connected with that was the use of metaphor mm -hmm. and parable. And then, you know, substantially, uh, as I wondered the wisdom of that uh, decision, you know, I began to think, well, you know, Jesus spoke in parables. I was quite effective, I think. <laughs> and, and it broadens the palette. You know, it allows you to paint a picture for a lot more people uh, because the entry point is not barred with preconceptions. So yeah. you, speak in, you speak in larger terms. That's right. So when you talk about, you know, the Jesus movement, I, I question uh, contemporarily uh, the, the, the immediacy. I think there has to be an emotional point for everybody to, to change their lives. Uh, either some spiritual abyss that they've been avoiding or chasm that now suddenly they turn to the invisible uh, and, uh, you know, the fact that the name Jesus has such power and such representative uh, capacity because uh, of the one who sent him, uh, the evolutionary aspect of the Jesus movement is what is interesting me now, because while you might pray to the specific image that you have in your mind and your heart, uh, the iconic image of maybe Jesus on the cross, Jesus kneeling, uh, Gethsemane, Jesus, uh, you know, with his apostles, Jesus with children, though you may have that visual. Is that really where 
you have now placed your faith in on that picture or in that image. And I'm suggesting that that is not the ultimate destination of believers. I think that there is a broader embrace that we are reaching for mm-hmm. with God. Yeah. And what used to be, uh, you know, a uh, toss away phrase, you know, um, God is love, love is God, God is love, has now taken on a, a much deeper significance for me. And I think it would for a younger generation again, because mm-hmm. as, as we talked before, uh, you know, uh, love was at the key, at the center of the cultural transitions uh, in the late 60s all the way through, let's say, probably mid, almost to the mid-70s. Bell-bottom trousers, uh, free love. Uh, but it was all pretty much, to my, my mind's eye, lowercase love. That is to say, not agape. You know, it was uh, the relationships between human beings or the affection or attraction. And these are all elements of a larger love. But where does love come from? What is the source of love? Where is the source of love? And I'm just lately I've been thinking about, you know, they, they say they measured the soul. When someone dies, they weigh about six ounces lighter than when they were alive. <laughs> and I'm. I'm wondering, has anybody ever tried to measure love? Yeah. Uh, because if there is a norm, and, and yet we all, I think, admit that it has enormous power, but we see it in an interpersonal sense. But I wonder if you could measure <laughs> the power of love. And if so, it stands to reason to me that love created all of this, that love is at the center of all of this, that love is the big bang. Love is it. Love happened. And so have we all. What does that mean then, John, to a younger generation who is looking for the iconic connection that they can live by? And it is a challenge Mm -hmm. because to ground, and, and yet it is a challenge, I think, worth accepting because to ground yourself in the in the being of everything and understand that it is love generated places you in a in a in a unique mind and heart set so that your life is a continuous uh, adventure in a sense emblematic of involved in and and attempting to express that love that you feel that you have been authored into um hard to explain it further than that without suddenly resorting to labels (laughs) but that's where i find myself so when when people do the retrospect of jesus movement uh I think it's commendable to take a look at it because it, but to me, it more signals the need uh, of those particular individuals at that time in their lives to find a deeper meaning. And it is parallel to what's happening in the world of people looking to find a deeper meaning and then trying to figure out how to live that out. Uh, And I, I just have the sense that if, you know, the Jewish belief, I think, that when the Messiah comes, it means peace on earth. That is the Messiah. That's the that's the evidence of the Messiah's second coming is peace on earth. I I believe that's the case. That sure is commensurate uh, with the belief that love is the center of everything, uh, because if that can manifest itself. And by the way, I've got to put in a plug for another artist that I never paid any attention to, who I'm sure is not part of the Jesus movement. And that's Neil Young, who just, uh-huh. come out, 
just come out with a new album and there is a review of it in the New Yorker mm. that, that is really heartfelt. Mm. Uh, and he is speaking to the importance of love and how we desperately need to understand its unanimity amongst all of us. That's what I've tried to do with a song called Love of the Capital L, uh, yeah. which I think I sent you a copy of. Yeah. Uh, and it's what I've been doing really ever since the wedding song. I recognize now, you know, I look back at these songs and I'm, I've mm -hmm. always been promoting uh, the divine as love in the uppercase. Without using his name. That's right. <laughs> Although in the beginning, you know, I wrote songs like No Jesus. I wrote, uh, you know, because when you're a kid, you know, <laughs> whether you're in a faith or in the faith or whether you're three years old, you're going to say doggy, cat, mommy, baby, uh -huh. da, da, goo, goo. You know, you're going to uh -huh. say, say Jesus, you're going to say God, you're going to say Jesus loves me, because I know. And you'd be right. <laughs> I am not sure that that's what you carry through into your adult life uh, so much as the love that you carry into your adult life. Yeah. And then look for ways to manifest it amongst others. What, what of the Jesus movement? Uh, you've really kind of answered this, but I'm going to ask it again and see if maybe we've missed something. Uh, you know, there does seem to be an interest in it right now. And uh, I don't know how much younger people are interested in it. I, I think with this new movie that'll be out in February, that might that might open up a lot more uh, talk and interest in among people who were not alive then. But what part? What part? What can we bring forward for today? Um, uh, a silly question because you really answered it yeah you, you <laughs> right you're talking about love yeah i think that's what we have to bring forward yeah I, th I think those of us who experienced the jesus movement in the 70s have to recognize that the the largest testimony that we can possibly offer is our lives and that aspect of it that underlines, supports, and reveals love. Hmm. Hmm. Well, you <laughs> said it, my friend. Yeah, I'm uh, afraid. I, I'm afraid I pulled a Barry McGuire on you. <laughs> yeah, there's all my questions here, but you know these questions. I'm <laughs> I'm looking at these questions and going, oh, those are ridiculous, <laughs> based on what we've been talking about. Uh, that's why I like about you. We've been talking about the real thing. And yeah. uh, I think you've always, you've always brought us to that one way or another. You've brought us back to the real thing. And um, uh, that I think that's what young people want. want. I do too. I, I, definitely, I definitely have always seen the value uh, and the need for authenticity. Uh, in our leaders and whatever, you know, the, I, I think the young people will have trouble uh, accepting Christianity uh, as the national uh, <laughs> nationalism that has pervaded yeah. the faith uh, manifest itself more and more. Uh, you know, that's, and, and it was like, what would you say? It was so free form in the early days you know the jesus movement was not a movement that was started by somebody who said hey let's start a movement called the jesus movement right the jesus movement have, was called the jesus movement because nobody could understand what to call it where it came yeah. from or how oh. it became so powerful and i think that the kids today you know have that same kind of hunger beyond the, the love that they feel or sometimes don't feel don't get from their parents but they recognize that there's a larger calling. Uh, I can't help but believe that that 
ultimately will manifest itself in a kind of holding hands together and marching for a larger cause. But the thing is, the cause is less literal. And because it is less literal and more spiritual, it will have to be faced, dealt with, and professed on a kind of poetic level, I'm, I'm thinking. Mm. Mm. And I think that came later. That really, that was not, I mean, the Jesus movement was pretty literal. I think. I, I think that the deepening yeah. and the subtlety came later. Yeah, well, it does with age, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. But I think, and, and I think young people are probably, though, smarter. Maybe they're smarter than we were, you know, at that age, that they're, you know, they, they might not mm -hmm. fall for the literal thing as much as they want something real. Yes, I think they're going to be reluctant to accept because they're being sold yes. so much by the real world. Oh, boy. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, still in all, nothing like a hug. <laughs> uh, nothing like a favor. Nothing like uh, letting that person who wants to make the right hand turn from the left hand lane. <laughs> feel comfortable about his decision uh, <laughs> go right ahead go right ahead yeah. Hey. You know, I, I, yeah well it's always fun talking to you john yes. i i, I mean yeah i the last time i remember sitting in the back seat of a car with your son we were headed i think we were headed for your house maybe to meet marty or something <laughs> yeah. and uh yeah i've always appreciated the fact that you've never overstepped uh, your calling, uh, that you've been true to the faith, uh, you've been true, never, t never, I, I don't feel like you've ever compromised, and uh, that's a really a noble place mm -hmm. to speak from, I think, in this day and age. It's, mm -hmm. it's what I think uh, a younger generation is looking for. Well, yeah. That's real leadership. Well, thank you. Thank you. And I, uh, you know, Mutual Appreciation Society <laughs> is uh, just uh, so much love, your, your creativity and, and uh, all along your freedom to, I, I, I love, I've heard that story before about don't use my name, but uh, I had forgotten about it until you mm. brought it up again. Mm. And how true that is, and uh, how you know when we speak like that, and when we speak in parables, you know Jesus, Jesus made it harder to get, not easier to get. He didn't make it more literal; he made it less literal, but more embracing. I think. Yeah. I think lighter. Well, he made he made you have to work for it. That's that's. Yeah. What but then you own it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, my friend, our time is up, but uh, that will be the last for sure. For sure. And and we are going to get everybody we've had on this uh, this little group with, that's getting larger and larger. And and actually, I used Marty. Uh, you will when you go back through your catches to maybe even just the last one. There should be a link. I interviewed Marty in terms of the Jesus movement. Oh, I'd like to see that. You know what's great about it is that she got it from a whole different perspective. You know, I, we were we were dealing with hippies and and uh, you know the that culture, the uh, the counterculture, and and she was a flight attendant at that time, and she started fellowship of christian airline personnel because she just three weeks after she became christian she was teaching bible studies she would listen to some pastor on the radio and then she'd go take that stuff to uh, 90 flight attendants she didn't care she just as a dynamo she was just gonna get everybody saved you know i mean that's just <laughs> and and she 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 started these meetings 
uh, where she'd have up to a thousand flight attendants and people through the air, airline business uh, in a in a banquet room of a hotel in Los Angeles, and she, and she just walked in the hotel and got a banquet room. And no, there were no refreshments, no anything, just space to get people. And then she she'd run into people like Hal Lindsey and Barry McGuire and like on her flights. And she would say, will you come speak? Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. So she was in, she was in the Jesus movement, in a whole different, a whole different aspect of it, you know, because, mm -hmm. because there was a move, God was moving. That's for yeah. sure. Yeah. So, yeah. This has been fun. Well, we're going to all get everybody all together somewhere, uh, probably after the new year. All right. And uh, and have a have a bit of a open panel where we can hope, talk about hope, these things. Hope to be part of it. Yeah. Great. Great. Thank you so much. All right, John. All right. Love to your wife. Yep. Love yeah. to Marty. Yep. Okay. Thank you. God bless. You too. Bye bye.